these patient populations are fairly small. Right. And again, this goes to what, you know, kind of what we were talking about before, which is trying to figure out, you know, how, how should I think about this uh, company and how should I think about this development at the company? You know, there's only 5,400 patients in the United States with Dravet syndrome. Um, you know, if you slap a $16,000 price tag, which is basically what the company gets for uh, their, their other marijuana drug, which is available in Europe called Sativex, on that, you're really only talking about an annualized sales pace of I think it's like 86 million dollars. Right. Okay. Round it to 100. GW Pharmaceuticals has a 1.8 billion dollar market cap. Yeah, which is reflecting, and, and it's interesting about GW because usually when you see a market cap like that and an you know an immediate drug that doesn't have like enormous sales potential, it seems at least at least based on some of these initial indications, you're thinking, oh, okay, follow-on indications, or you're thinking there must be something else in the pipeline that looks really really good. Interestingly, with GW doesn't really seem to be the case with either. There's just not that, there doesn't appear to be that much commercial opportunity, at least in the next few years for the company. Well, you could probably, you could make the argument and model that this could theoretically be, you know, a, a drug that generates, if you include the, you know, LGS indication, you know, somewhere between 100 and 200 million bucks. I mean, that's, that, but that's a guesstimate, right? And right. we all know that whenever we make assumptions on you know, what the peak sales forecast of a drug are, we run into a lot of trouble. So yeah. you, know, you got to rein that expectation in, probably lowball rather than highball that. The other thing that investors should get bear in mind is that, you know, if GW Pharmaceuticals is proving that, you know, CBD helps epileptic, epileptics, well, some amount of their market share may go to the dispensaries in these states um, that are selling, you know, extracts that are high in CBD. Sure. So they could end up competing against dispensaries, which probably are going to be cheaper. Um, you know, I mean, it will be interesting to see how that dynamic plays out. And then, of course, there's also the risk that, you know, this indicates uh, or, or I should say, fuels R and D efforts at competitors. Right. Um, and then you've got a number of different, you know, competing therapies that hit the market. Good for patients, but not necessarily good for investors. Yeah. Well, and that's what's been interesting about the marijuana market is it's just so weird. You know, I mean, because you have this bifurcation where. Um, where you know it's a controlled substance, but in some cases, some states are supporting it. You know, the FDA is doing this stuff with GW and with competitors like Insys looking at CBD compounds, um, and and it's there's a lot of uncertainty, um, and especially given GW's market cap and um, what at least the initial sales look like. Um, for me, this is clearly still a stay away story. Um, really interesting, really uh, exciting. They'll hopefully be able to, to find something that that makes life better for these patients with Dravet syndrome and some of these other um, indications that we're talking about, but not an investment necessarily yeah. that, that a, we're a interested in. A big win jumping. for patients, yeah. um, but maybe not as, as big a, uh, a win for investors uh, from this moment forward. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> 